The Justice League's founding members gather everyone at the Watchtower for an important meeting. Aquaman tells them their agenda is clear, and that what's at stake should not be underestimated. Superman claims that the decisions they make today will reverberate for years to come. Wonder Woman explains that their decision will influence whether the world continues to trust the Justice League. During the discussion, John worries that an expansion of the League could generate another escalation of hostilities from their enemies and would lead to another Injustice League. Superman agrees with him but claims it is still their option to vote no on all League candidates. Leading with that, he then nominates Icon for League membership. Green Arrow asks if his selection was based on his suspicion that Icon is a Kryptonian. He claims that Superman once suspected Captain Marvel to be a Kryptonian before they made him an official member. Wonder Woman concurs with Superman's suggestion and claims she is also interested in Icon's protege, Rocket. She states that they could use more female superheroes in the League, to which the other female superheroes agree. Moving on to the next candidate, Batman proposes Adam for League membership. Given his size, Captain Marvel wonders how useful he'd be in a fight. Batman claims that his size makes him valuable, to which Flash agrees. Flash claims they could use more raw power and suggests Green Lantern guy Gardner, but the League's resident Green Lantern Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart sternly object. Green Arrow then nominates Red Arrow and explains that Roy has more experience now and that he is ready. Aquaman questions his decision and claims that Red Arrow has been known to be uncooperative and disrespectful. Superman argues that although Red Arrow may already be 18, the rest of the team is too young. He claims that he refuses to induct children into the League. Dr. Fate disagrees with Superman, claiming that he's previously worked with Kid Flash and Aqualad, and argues that both are ready. When Wonder Woman opens the topic about Zatanna, Dr. Fate quickly objects, which is to be expected given that she's his daughter. Captain Marvel wonders why Dr. Fate is a member of the League when he coerced Zatera into giving up his life to him in exchange for his daughter. Dr. Fate claims that Zatara desires for him to remain in the League. They then review the next prospect, Plastic Man. But Flash raises his concern, arguing that the candidate has a substantial criminal record. When Captain Marvel laughs in an outburst during the meeting, Flash discusses whether Captain Marvel should remain a member now that they know he is only 10. Red Tornado vouches for him, claiming that Captain Marvel has the body of an adult and has Solomon's wisdom. Aquaman protests and claims wisdom does not equal maturity. When Black Canary suggests he step out while they discuss it, Batman refuses. Batman claims that Captain Marvel is a member entitled to participate in the discussion until or unless he's voted out. Wonder Woman expresses his concern that Captain Marvel lied about his age. Captain Marvel claims he never lied, he just never mentioned it. Wonder Woman states that omission is still considered lying and is concerned that he kept an important secret from them. When she claims that no one in the League knew about it, Batman speaks up and claims he did. Wonder Woman wasn't surprised, claiming that Batman reared Robin into a life of crime fighting at the mere age of nine. Batman explains that Robin needed to help bring the men who murdered his family to justice. After much deliberation, Martian Manhunter claims that everyone agrees that 18 is a suitable minimum age for joining the League. He wonders what to make of Miss Martian, saying that although she is an adolescent by Martian standards, she was born 48 Earth years ago. The others wonder if they should decide by chronology or biology and take Superboy as an example. Given that Superboy was created a year ago, Black Canary wonders if he has to spend 17 more years to be considered an adult. Meanwhile, Superboy and Miss Martian spend Thanksgiving with Zatanna, who gets emotional when reminded of her father. She claims that this would be the first holiday she'd spend without him. Superboy feels envious, claiming that she has at least a father. 
Out of nowhere, he experiences a loud ringing when he suddenly hears Luther's voice. Luther claims that with Superman off-world, only he could listen to this frequency. He then asks him to meet alone at East Potomac Park in Washington, D.C., promising him it would be worth the trip. Despite his reputation, Superboy still went out to meet with Lex Luthor. Luthor introduces himself as the new chairman of Project Cadmus, but Superboy claims he doesn't want anything to do with him or Cadmus. As he walks away, Luther tells him that Cadmus has created a new superclone. Hearing that, Superboy quickly makes his way to Cadmus to see for himself. He asks Guardian where they are keeping the new superclone, but Double X informs him that he is the only superclone in Cadmus. Dr. Spence explains that all human or Kryptonian cloning projects have been shut down since his escape. Guardian escorts Superboy to the lab and explains that Dr. Spence and her team have made remarkable genetic medical research breakthroughs. He claims that the genomorphs are becoming more independent and educated. Some even have names. While checking the place, Double X telepathically tells Superboy that he can trust Guardian, who, unlike him, has kept his psychic powers a secret. He claims they were all created to be exploited as living weapons, which even Superboy was designed to replace or destroy Superman. Double X reminded him of the plight of those left behind after he helped Superboy escape from Cadmus. Superboy claims the League freed all the Genomorphs, but Double X argues that, unlike him, they cannot freely walk the surface like him. Double X asks him what he intends to do once he finds this super clone. Superboy claims he will free it, just like Aqualad, Robin, and Kid Flash did for him. Superboy continues his investigation when he finds a secret door behind a wall. He pried it open and was horrified to discover the secret lab filled with experiments. He was surprised to see another genomorph in a pod named Project Match that looked exactly like him. When Match wakes up, he abruptly attacks Superboy when he sees Superman's symbol on his shirt. Superboy tries to reason with him and claims he is on his side, but Match gets agitated whenever he sees the symbol. Although Superboy refuses to fight him, Wolf attacks the clone to protect his master. Superboy is surprised to see Match flying, who, unlike him, cannot do so. Despite the restraint he showed, Superboy gets knocked out by the clone. He then brands his chest with the symbol using his heat vision, envious when he sees Superboy's shirt. Superboy regains consciousness and is furious when he discovers he is inside his old pod. Dr. Spence explains that it was the fastest way to heal his injuries. Superboy accuses her of another mad scientist picking up where Desmond left off. Guardian informs him that they have lost track of the clone, and Double X explains that all security cameras went offline after their battle. By the time they finally arrived, Match was already gone. Guardian claims that he wasn't the only Genomorph to disappear in Cadmus. As soon as Guardian and Double X leave, Superboy gets a call from Luther, who asks him if he has found the truth he was searching for. He claims that, although he knows little about Project Match, Luther explains that he knows more about him. He explains that Kryptonian DNA is notoriously difficult for human science to replicate. When Superboy was created, the gaps in the sequences were bridged with human DNA, preventing him from manifesting his full Kryptonian powers. Unlike him, Match was designed with pure Kryptonian DNA, but the missing sequences in his DNA made him unstable. Luther suggests he bring Match back and put him on ice, but Superboy refuses. Luther then leaves him a tin box of patches that he claims will help him in his battle against Match. Luther calls them shields, experimental patches that suppress his human DNA for an hour and allow his Kryptonian powers to surface. He claims that with it he can be as powerful as Match or even Superman. Superboy refuses, but Luther claims he can keep them anyway if he changes his mind. 
Superboy continues his search for Match and is relieved to find the experiment pods empty. When he's at a dead end, Superboy telepathically contacts Double X and wonders what he is hiding. He claims that he heard his heartbeat raise when he accused Guardian earlier. Double X claims that he has questioned the oldest genomorphs, and they concur that Match is not Superboy's younger brother, which is what he was made to believe. He reveals that Match was Cadmus's first attempt to clone Superman, and his Kryptonian DNA rendered him uncontrollable. Worried he would go out of control, Cadmus decided to freeze him and tried cloning again. Double X reveals that Desmond and Cadmus' founder, Lex Luthor, was behind the cloning projects. Superboy suspects that Luthor must be the one behind Match's disappearance, but Double X admits that he was the one who had taken him. He then guides Superboy through a series of hallways and secret stairways that lead to a hideout deep under Cadmus. When he finally finds the exit, he is surprised to see an enormous underground city, which Double X calls the Genomorph City. Double X states that he liberated the Genomorphs one by one and gave them a new life there. He claims he dreams of one day having the world accept them for who they are, just like they accepted Superboy. No one must know that Genomorph City exists. So, he brought Match. Superboy gets furious when he finds Match chained and unresponsive. Double X reassures him that it's for his safety and explains that the genomes keep him docile with their psychic abilities. He worries that, if Match escapes, it will push back the genomorph caused by decades. Superboy is displeased with them holding Match a prisoner like Cadmus did. He demanded they release him, but Double X explained that they planned to rehabilitate him and would release him once he was ready. When he sees Superman's symbol on his shirt, Match goes rabid and breaks off his chains. He then charges at them and smashes Superboy against the wall. Double X tries to keep him calm, but Match knocks him down. Superboy stands back up, but Match attacks him with his heat vision. Match overpowers him in a battle of strength, forcing Superboy to reconsider Luther's shield patch. With no signs of stopping, Superboy uses S.H.I.E.L.D. to unleash his full power temporarily. When Match tries to punch him, Superboy blocks it and sends him flying with a punch. Although he has reached his full potential, Superboy struggles to control his new powers. Despite this, Superboy still beats up Match, who is no match for him. Even though Match is already unconscious, Superboy continues to punch him to the ground. Guardian arrives with Cadmus' soldiers and stops him, worried he will kill him. Unfortunately, Cadmus has also discovered Genomorph City, which Guardian suspects must be where the missing Genomorphs were hiding. They then return the unconscious Match to a pod and freeze him, worried that he will go out of control again, which Superboy is uncomfortable with. Later, Superboy meets with Luther again, who is furious when he discovers a tracker in the tin box he gave him. Luther suspects that he must have learned it when he used his X-ray vision. Superboy confronts him, having realized that he was the one who ordered the cloning projects and used him to find the missing genomorphs. Luther claims that a good businessman has to keep track of his assets. He suspects that Superboy is furious because he discovered half of his DNA is human and reveals himself as the mysterious donor. Superboy refuses to believe it, but Luther insists that his human DNA came from him. Luther wonders if Superman even bothered to give Superboy any attention. He concludes that Superman lives in a world that is black and white. Since villains created him, Superman thinks something must be wrong with him. Luther claims that they are more alike than he cares to admit. Superboy refuses to be anything like him and returns the shields. But Luther refuses, claiming that it was a gift from a father to his son. When Superboy threatens and grabs him by the tie, Luther mentions Red Sun. Suddenly, Superboy finds himself alone at the park and discovers Luther has escaped. He realized that time had passed, 
given it was already night. He is about to throw away the shields in the river, but changes his mind and decides to keep them. Meanwhile, at the Watchtower, the League members have come to a decision. Superman then discusses the candidates for new members and continues League membership with them. Batman explains that they have considered origin, gender, size, experience, age, temperament, and background. Wonder Woman claims that when all is said and done, she reminds everyone that the more significant question they need to ask themselves is who they trust. Trust to fight by their side, trust their backs to, and trust to uphold the highest standards and ideals of the League. That said, Batman claims it is time to vote. Once everyone has voted, Batman then adjourns the meeting. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.